solemnly and sincerely promise and swear that I will always hail, ever conceal, and never reveal any of the arts, parts, or points of the secret arts or any mysteries of ancient Freemasonry which I have received, binding myself under no less penalty than that of having my throat cut from ear to ear, my tongue torn out by its roots and buried in the rough sands of the sea, should I ever knowingly or willingly violate this my solemn oath and obligation as an inter-apprentice mason. So help me God. Freemasonry's religious teachings with the Word of God is very easily done by examining the three foundational fundamentals of the biblical Christian belief. No one could truly consider themselves to be a biblically born-again Christian without holding to these three beliefs. These three foundational beliefs are number one, Jesus is God with us, God in the flesh and the only way of salvation for all of mankind. And number two, the Bible. It is the final, authoritative, unique, and inerrant word of God. And number three, salvation is found only through Jesus Christ and the grace of God alone. Every religious system that is cultic or biblically false in nature will fail at least one, and in most cases, all of these three doctrinal tests. Let's examine these beliefs next to the teachings of Freemasonry. The first one, Jesus is God and the only way of salvation. Freemasonry denies this in its openly universalism teaching of the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. This is a hallmark of Masonic understanding. Masonry teaches that there are many paths to salvation and that all religions hold some truth in finding this path. They teach that God is the Father of all and that all men are brothers. But what does the Bible say about this? The Bible says that God is the creator of us all and becomes our Father only when we profess His Son Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then we are born again. We are only brothers if Jesus alone is our Lord. And this really is very, very different than the Masonic Universalist teaching of the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. Biblical Christianity has long denounced this type of universalism teaching as heresy. Yet it is the foundational teaching of Freemasonry. Additionally, every true Mason knows that it is generally not permitted in a Mason lodge to mention the possibility that Jesus is the only way of salvation or the only true Son of God lest another Mason brother of another persuasion be offended. Listen to Masonic authorities on this matter of biblical doctrine. From Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma, God is, as man conceives him, the reflected image of man himself. From J.D. Buck, Mystic Masonry, The only personal God Freemasonry accepts is humanity in toto. Humanity, therefore, is the only personal God that there is. From Albert Mackey, Masonic Ritualist. The removal of the name of Jesus and references to him in Bible verses used in the ritual are slight but necessary modifications. 
from Carl H. Claudy, Introduction to Freemasonry. In his private petitions, a man may petition God or Jehovah, Allah or Buddha, Muhammad or Jesus. He may call upon the God of Israel or the first great cause. In the Masonic Lodge, he hears petition to the great architect of the universe, finding his own deity under that name. A hundred paths may wind upward around a mountain, and at the top they meet. Furthermore, when a Mason chooses to enter the appendant body of the Shriners, many of his oaths, secret passwords, and phrases invoke the name of Allah and the authority of the Muslim Quran. May Allah, the God of Arab, Muslim and Mohammedan, the God of our fathers, support me to the entire fulfillment of the same. The invoking of the name of Allah is done regardless of whether a man is a professing Christian or not. There seems to be no concern with the offending of a fellow Christian Masonic brother with the name of Allah and the Quran, only the fear of offending a fellow brother with the name of Jesus. And what does Freemasonry say about the Bible? The Bible, God's Word. While it is true that a Bible is generally found on a Masonic altar in the Lodge and that it is the centerpiece to much Masonic mythology and teaching, it is equally true that the Muslim Quran would be found in a Muslim Lodge or the Hindu Vedas would be found in a Hindu Lodge. Masonry actually teaches that the Holy Bible is just one part of God's Word and a part of the furniture of the Lodge and that the complete Word of God is found in all the religious teachings of the world. This is a far cry from the foundational understanding of Biblical Christianity and the Word of God. From Albert Pike, Digest of Morals and Dogma, The literal meaning of the Bible is for the vulgar, that is the common uneducated man, only. From the Kentucky Monitor, Masonry makes no profession of Christianity but looks forward to the time when in which there shall be but one altar and one worship, one common altar of masonry on which the Veda, Shastra, Said, Zendavista, Koran, and Holy Bible shall lie, and at whose shrine the Hindu, the Persian, the Assyrian, the Chaldean, the Egyptian, the Chinese, the Mohammedan, the Jew, and the Christian may kneel. Further confirmation of this belief in modern masonry may be found on this website, in which a list of the holy books of Freemasonry is given. On this website, their quote is that all of these sacred books allude to a supreme deity. From Chase's Digest of Masonic Law, it is stated that masonry has nothing to do with the Bible and that it is not founded upon the Bible. For if it were, it would not be masonry. It would be something else. <laughs>